Hello, today we're going to talk about related rates. Related rates is a calculus concept that is sometimes difficult for people to understand, so I'm going to give you two different examples. Some guidelines for solving related rates problems before we begin. First, identify all given quantities uh, and quantities to be determined. Make a sketch and label the quantities if needed. There are some problems you just don't need to make a sketch of, but others it's very helpful. Second, we're going to write an equation involving the variables whose rates of change either are given or are to be determined. This equation is going to be our main equation and we're going to end up using it twice. Step three, we're going to use the chain rule to implicitly differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to time t. Fourth step, after completing step three, we're going to substitute into the resulting equation all known values for the variables and their rates of change then we'll solve for the required rate of change. Here are a few tips and tricks that I've picked up. First, you will generally use your relationship equation twice, once to find a missing value and once to find the derivative with respect to time. Notice this word generally. It will not always be that way as one of our examples shows us, but generally we will. Anytime an angle is mentioned, think trigonometry. I know many of you prefer not to think of trigonometry, but go with it when you see an angle. Always remember that everything in a related rates problem is a function of time. Every single variable is related to time. Example one is going to be a ladder problem. In this particular problem, which is taken from WebAssign in the Larson's Calculus uh, 10th edition, a ladder 25 feet long is leaning against the wall of a house. The base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a rate of 2 feet per second. We're going to determine what the velocity of the top of the ladder is when the base is given. We're going to consider the triangle formed by the side of the house, ladder, and the ground and find the rate at which the area of the triangle is changing. And then we're going to find the rate at which the angle between the ladder and the wall of the house is changing when the base of the ladder is 20 feet from the wall. First things first. The 25 foot long ladder is leaning against the wall of the house. And although we have a nice picture here, Sometimes it's nice to draw a simpler picture, just a triangle, where we're given an x value of 7 feet away from the wall. We know that the ladder, the base of the ladder, is being pulled away at a rate of 2 feet per second. So we know our dx dt equals 2 feet per second. We know this is a positive value because it's going away from the house. It's going to the right, which is generally the positive direction on the x-axis. What we want to know is the velocity of the top of the ladder, which is asking us to find dy dt. Top of the ladder, going down the house, find dy dt. We expect this answer to be negative as it is going down. Here's our relationship equation. x squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. The length of the ladder, not gonna change. And even though we know the ladder is currently seven feet away from the wall, this will be changing as it's being pulled away. So we'll use a generic x and y for the other two sides of our triangle. 25 is our hypotenuse. Solving for our particular value, we know that 7 squared plus y squared equals 25 squared. Uh, subtracting 49 from both sides, we find that y squared equals 576. And we'll use a y value of 24. The second time we use our relationship equation is as we're finding derivatives. Finding the derivative of x squared, that's 2x, but remember, x is changing with respect to time, so we'll multiply by dx dt. The derivative of 2y, excuse me, the derivative of y squared is 2y times the derivative of y with respect to time. And since this 25 squared is a constant, the derivative is 0. We want to isolate, we want to find dy dt, so we'll subtract 2x dx dt from both sides, divide by 2y on both sides and end up with dy dt equals a minus x divided by y times dx dt. Substituting the values given, x equals 7, the found value, y equals 24, and the dx dt value of 2, we end up with negative 14 over 24, which simplifies to negative 7 twelfths feet per second. And again, the negative indicates the downward that we were expecting. We're going to do this, this problem two more times, different lengths, 20 feet away from the wall this time, so x equals 20. We have our same relationship equation. 
This time, when x equals 20, we know that y equals 15. Our same derivative equation. And when we solve for dy dt, just like in the previous problem, we end up with negative x divided by y times dx dt. Substituting our values, negative 40 over 15 is negative 8 thirds feet per second. I did go through that one a little quicker, but you can see the details in the previous version of this problem. Just for kicks, let's do it one more time. When we're 24 feet away from the wall for the x value, we once again find our y using the relationship equation, y equals 7. We find our derivative of the relationship equation. Substitute all known values once we've solved for dy dt, and we end up with negative 48 divided by 7 feet per second. One of the tricks, if you use WebAssign, is to always use the exact value unless the problem specifically states how you should round. If there's no information about rounding, use the exact value, the improper fraction in this case. Continuing with this problem, part B, consider the triangle formed by the side of the house, the ladder, and the ground. And here we've drawn the side of the house, the ladder, and the ground. Find the rate at which the area of the triangle is changing when the base of the ladder is 20 feet from the wall. So I know that I'm going to draw a height and a base because area of a triangle is area equals one half base times height. Although this is still a right triangle problem uh, and Pythagorean theorem would work, we're looking for area. So area is going to be my main equation. Uh, finding the rate at which the area changes is asking us to find dA dt. Given the base of the ladder is 20 feet from the wall, my b value will be 20. I can still use the Pythagorean theorem to find the particular height at this given base value. And we can see a previous problem, slide 6, uh, that our h value of 15 will give us a change in height of negative 8 thirds. Uh, previous problem, no sense in reinventing the wheel. Let's use our previous information. As we're finding the derivative of a with respect to time, on the right-hand side, we have the 1 half. And then the b times h will give us a product rule. The product rule says first, so b, times the derivative of the second, dh dt, plus h, second, times the derivative of the first, db dt. Remember, these are multiplication, and you're adding the two products. So the order is not uh, significant. If you do your derivative in the other order, that's completely acceptable. As we substitute our base of 20, our dh dt from the previous slide of negative 8 thirds, the height we found to be 15, and the given db dt in this case of 2, we find that the area is changing at negative 35 thirds square feet per second. In part c, we're finding the rate at which the angle between the ladder and the wall of the house is changing. As soon as the angle is mentioned, I'm thinking we're going to need to use trigonometry. The base of the ladder is given as 20 feet from the wall. Ooh, missed there. We're given an angle theta. It's the side of the house to the ladder. We're given the side opposite that is 20, and we're given a hypotenuse of 25. In this particular case, we can find that the y value is 15. This was also on an earlier slide. Uh, y equals 15 when x equals 20 in order to make our hypotenuse 25. This comes from the Pythagorean theorem. Using our relationship equation, we can find the derivative. The derivative of sine theta is cosine theta times d theta dt. The derivative of x divided by 25 looks a little like a quotient rule, but if you think of this as 1 25th, times x, it's much easier. The derivative is 1 25th dx dt. Dividing both sides by cosine, or multiplying by secant if you prefer, we have d theta dt equals 1 over 25 cosine theta multiplied by dx dt. Although we know that sine of theta is x over 25, I'm not going to use inverse sine in order to find an actual value for theta. I'm going to keep in mind that my y value is 15, and the cosine of theta will therefore be 15 over 25. Replacing 15 over 25 for cosine 
2 for my dx dt, I can simplify to get 2 fifteenths radians per second for the rate at which the angle between the ladder and the wall of the house is changing when the base of the ladder is 20 feet from the wall. Now, ladder problems are good, but all right triangle problems do not lead us to the Pythagorean theorem. Sometimes we're only using trigonometry. In this example, also from Larson's 10th edition of Calculus via WebAssign, an airplane flies at an altitude of y equals 7 miles toward a point directly over an observer. The speed of the plane is 700 miles per hour. We're going to find the rates at which the angle of elevation theta is changing when the angle is given by 45 degrees, 60 degrees, and 70 degrees. Well, rates of change, so of the angle, d theta dt, based on given theta values. Here we go. In the first one, I redraw my triangle, not quite as fancy as the picture here, just a basic triangle. I know that I have a height of 7 miles. I have an unknown value of x. How do I know that I need x and not the hypotenuse? The speed of the plane is 700 miles per hour. If the plane is flying at a constant altitude of 7 miles, this tells me that my dx dt is going towards the observer, or in the negative direction, of 700. This tells me I will be using a dx dt, therefore I'm going to need to know an x value. Looking at the information that I have in relation to theta, I have opposite over adjacent. I'm going to use tangent of theta equals 7 divided by x as my primary equation. For this value in particular, theta equals 45 degrees. I know that tangent of 45 degrees is equal to 1. If 1 is equal to 7 divided by x, x must equal 7 as well. Using our primary equation and taking the derivative, the derivative of tangent of theta, secant squared theta times d theta dt, the derivative of 7 over x, I'm going to think of that as 7x to the negative 1, will be negative 7 x to the negative 2 times dx dt, but I like positive exponents, so let's call that negative 7 over x squared times dx dt. Dividing both sides by secant squared is the same as multiplying both sides by cosine squared to get d theta dt equals negative 7 cosine squared theta divided by x squared times dx dt. The negative 7 here from the formula Cosine of theta at 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2. When we square it, we'll end up with 2 fourths, also known as 1 half. x we found to be 7, so we have a 7 squared in the denominator. And my dx dt is a negative 700, as the plane is moving to the left in our picture, uh, as the dx dt. When I multiply all of this and simplify, I end up with 50 radians per hour. Keep in mind, the speed of the plane is given in miles per hour. However, when I look at my answer, they want it in radians per minute. To do a conversion, unit conversion, there is one hour in 60 minutes. Multiplying in this way will cancel our hours. And I'll end up with 50 divided by 60 radians per minute, which simplifies to 5 sixths radians per minute. We're going to do this problem two more times. Maybe not as much detail on each of the next slides, but you can always come back to this one if you need to. Same height of 7 miles. Speed of the plane is still 700 miles per hour, but now we're looking at a theta value of 60. The same general setup for our picture. The same basic equation to start. In this case, the tangent of 60 is equal to the square root of 3. If the square root of 3 is equal to 7 divided by x, multiply both sides by x, divide by the square root of 3 to get x equals 7 over the square root of 3. Now I happen to know we're going to need to square this, so I didn't use up any time or mental effort in rationalizing my denominator. Sometimes this is a great idea, but I generally choose to do that as a last step rather than in inter intermediate steps just to save myself some trouble. Using the formula that we had on the last slide, we know that d theta dt is equal to negative 7 cosine squared theta divided by x squared times dx dt. 
Again, at 60 degrees, we know that cosine of theta is equal to 1 half, so we replace, make sure you square it. X value, given is 7 over square root of 3, replace it, make sure you square it, and we do our multiplication. The answer of 75 is in radians per hour. In order to get radians per minute, we divide by 60 minutes in one hour. Simplifying 75 over 60, they have a common factor of 15, gives us 5 fourths radians per minute. Notice this is a positive angle. As the plane gets closer, the angle of elevation will be increasing from the observer. In our final version, our angle is 70 degrees. 70 degrees is not a nice reference angle. I don't know the tangent of 70 degrees. Rather than writing down decimals, a decimal approximation for this, I'm going to use the exact number as long as I can so my calculator holds all those digits for me. If the tangent of theta equals 7 over x, then the tangent of 70 degrees is 7 over x. Multiplying by x, dividing by tangent of 70 degrees, I end up with x equals 7 over tangent of 70 degrees. Using our same d theta dt, which is equal to negative 7 cosine squared theta over x squared times dx dt, I find that Cosine of theta? I don't know. It's cosine of 70 degrees. I wrote it in the traditional form with the square on the outside of parentheses, just because that's how I'm going to put it in my calculator. It looks a little better to me. For my x value, 7 divided by tangent of 70 degrees. These are both squared, as the formula states, multiplied by a negative 700 as dx dt. Entering this entire thing in my calculator all at once, I find that I have 88.3022 radians per hour. To change this into radians per minute, I divide by 60 to get 1.47. Notice I am asked to round my answer to two decimal places, so in this case I'll use the decimal rather than trying to fit it into an improper fraction. These are related rates. These are two of the more challenging problems uh, that you'll see, although there are many, many more, more difficult than this. And I hope this helped you out. Thank you.